The mass production boom that began in the 1940s brought many emerging technologies into the spotlight of the commercial world. Chief among these was plastics. Plastics were a remarkable creation. They could be shaped into almost anything one could imagine. They were easy to make, and best of all, plastic was cheap. Hailed as one of the greatest innovations of its time, plastic was thought to be one of the building blocks on which the post-war world would be built upon. And this prediction was not far off. I just want to say one word to you. Just one word. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir, you. Plastics. Exactly, how do you mean? There's a great future in plastics. Think about it. Will you think about it? Yes, I will. Enough said. That's a deal. Today, plastic is used in nearly every industry from electronics to construction, and has permeated every aspect of our lives. As plastics became more common in our lives, we began to produce huge amounts of it. And suddenly, we were faced with a massive amount of plastic waste we had to get rid of. That was when we saw what we thought was the largest landfill on Earth, the ocean. Once in the ocean, plastic was out of sight and out of mind. Until now. Only recently have we begun to understand the grave consequences of what we had done. And only now have we realized the dangers of what we once thought was one of the greatest innovations in scientific history. In order to find out what people in our community knew about plastic marine debris and recycling, we took to the streets to ask them. How long do you think it takes for that plastic to like biograde and like break down? No idea. <laughs> How long do you think it takes for plastics to biodegrade? Uh, eternity. That's, that's true. Thank you. Plastic has the potential to destroy entire ecosystems, starting with their ability to absorb and retain toxins, which can become highly concentrated in the plastics. The United Nations Environmental Program acknowledges this to be a serious and harmful threat, because if these contaminated plastics are ingested, they can cause serious health defects. There are four main types of toxins that can be absorbed in plastics. POPs and PAHs are linked to behavioral, reproductive, developmental, neurological, endocrine, and immunologic health defects, as well as being a probable carcinogen. PCBs from a group called the Dirty Dozen, which is a group of cancer-causing toxins. DDTs are pesticides and are found in extremely high concentrations near the industrial Los Angeles area. BEPA and other phthalates are plastic additives that have come under a lot of scrutiny because of their link to health defects, including hormonal interference and endocrine disruption. Their use in food and beverage containers became a global health concern. The EPA says that there is strong evidence backing this claim. But are they dangerous to us? Persistent organic pollutants can be transmitted and accumulated up the food chain, from plankton to fish to your local grocer to you. But how much plastic waste do we actually produce? According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, in 2012, 32 million tons of plastic waste was produced, 12.7% of the total municipal solid waste. According to the Clean Air Council, in 2009's International Coastal Cleanup, it was discovered by the Ocean Conservancy that the second most common waste item found were plastic bags. Less than 1% of plastic bags are recycled every year. Have you used any plastic today? Um, no, actually. Other than my credit cards here at the craft fair. Um, so when you do use plastic, do you generally recycle it? Oh yeah, have, we have a, the bag-o bags for the recycles with all the plastic pieces that go into it. Yeah. Great. There are and many ways overall, to dispose of the plastic waste that is accumulated in a fashion that causes little to no environmental damage, unlike disposing in landfills and the ocean. Some of the already implemented programs that could be furthered include recycling and waste-to-energy programs. The process of recycling begins with the sorting by the resin content. There are seven different resins. An additional sort will then be done within each plastic based on color. This is because dyes can be contaminated and cause an entire batch of potential recycling material to be scrapped. The pieces of plastic are then chopped up into small pieces and chunks and cleaned to further remove any debris and residue left on the plastic. 
The plastic is then melted down and compressed into tiny pellets called nurdles. It is now ready to reuse and fashion into a new, completely different product. Easy, moderate, very useful, and difficult are the different levels of recyclability that the seven types of plastic resin can be separated into. The easiest and most common is PET, or P-E-T-E, -E, number one, such as soda and water bottles, medicine containers, and many other consumer product containers. Number two, the other easiest plastic to recycle is reserved for high-density polyethylene plastics. These are usually heavier containers, such as laundry detergents and bleaches, milks, shampoo, and motor oil. Numbers 3, 4, and 5 are considered to be moderately hard to recycle. Few recycling centers will accept these due to their very low rate of recyclability. A very useful plastic to recycle is number 6, polystyrene, also known as styrofoam. Often seen in coffee cups, disposable cutlery, meat trays, packing peanuts, and insulation. Though it isn't recycled nearly as often as numbers 1 and 2, when it is recycled, it can be turned into many different items. The hardest plastic to recycle, however, is seldom collected or recycled. This is number 7. Number 7 is crafted from various combinations of the other plastics or from unique plastic formulations not commonly used. Such items can be turned into product manufacturers to avoid contributing to the local waste stream and instead put the burden on the bankers to recycle or dispose of the items properly. So, if you must use plastic, try to use numbers 1 or 2, which are the most commonly recycled plastics. Avoid plastic bags. And numbers 3, 4, 5, and 7, they have very low recycling rates. However, only about 25% of the plastic produced in the United States is recycled, and 50% of the plastic we use, we use only once and throw away. Recycling plastic takes 88% less energy than making plastic from raw materials. And if we recycled the other 75%, we could save 1 billion gallons of oil and 44 million cubic yards of landfill space annually. Recycling, the turning of old defunct plastics into new products, is a great way of postponing the plastic problem. Waste energy programs create energy from municipal waste. This process is done by incinerating the waste to create heat for a steam-powered turbine. While filter and gas expelled by the burning waste, if done correctly, there is zero waste, and the only thing that comes out of the fluke is water vapor. Combining waste to energy programs with recycling programs is the best way to consume the plastic we create, instead of letting fish try to do it for us. While we were looking for people to interview, we found a representative of Burrow Skateboards, a company that uses recycled fishing nets to create its skateboards. How did you get into this uh, occupation? Yeah, it was an idea a couple of friends and I had um, about two years ago where we just wanted to do something about plastic getting into the ocean. And we started researching what types of plastic were there and eventually wound up on wanting to do something with fishnets. This massive amount of plastic in the world's oceans have caused many problems for the ocean's animals. There have been more than 260 species that have been reported to ingest or to be entangled in plastic marine debris in California alone. The total number of entangled or impacted animals that die at sea and don't wash up on shore is still unknown to us. Plastic debris can cause lacerations, drowning, starvation, and poor reproduction. The most dangerous forms of plastics are the bags, balloons, caps, food wrappers, straws, fishing gear, plastic sheeting, strapping bands, cigarette filters, plastic rings, and packing strips. Ocean currents transport these large amounts of plastic, along with many young animals, like the juvenile logger sea turtle, who use these currents for food and shelter. You can only imagine how problematic this is for marine species. It is up to us as a society and as individuals to protect and conserve the gifts that the natural world has endowed us with.